After a whopping six delays, Morbius the Living Vampire is finally living it up in theaters. Directed by Daniel Espinosa, this film gives Jared Leto some CGI fangs as the Sanguinarian Spider-Man spinoff. Adria Arjona plays Morbius' main squeeze slash science partner, and Matt Smith plays the Lestat to his Louis. But the big question, what does Morbius bring to the Sony Cinematic Spider-Verse? Does it connect to the MCU? And if so, how? We'll break all that down and let you be the judge, but heads up, we're about to spoil everything, so if you don't want all the plot twists sucked out of this movie, or you just don't care what we have to say, now would be the time to engulf yourself in a swarm of screeching bats to drown us out. Okay, let's start with the bird of prey in the room. Even if the mid credit scenes hadn't leaked ahead of the movie, we've known that Michael Keaton would show up as the Vulture since he was featured prominently in multiple trailers. But what's his involvement? Well, aside from two mid credit scenes, he's literally not in Morbius. But the stingers do set a lot of stuff up. In the first one, a giant blue hole gets ripped in the fabric of the universe, or at least the sky above New York. Presumably, this is connected to the holes that Doctor Strange was patching up at the end of Spider-Man No Way Home. And suddenly, one Adrian Toomes, aka the Vulture, appears in an empty jail cell, slightly confused, but otherwise unfazed. So that's a pretty big deal. After that, we're treated to a splashy Daily Bugle cover story about how authorities were equally flummoxed by this sudden appearance, since there's no record, criminal or otherwise, of anybody named Adrian Toomes in this particular universe. Because of this epic legal loophole that even Matt Murdock could have seen coming, Adrian Toomes gets let out of jail. Hey, uh, Dr. Mike, you and I should stay in touch. The second mid credit scene opens on Michael Morbius in human form, hauling ass down a deserted highway in the middle of the desert. Like, in a car. He stops the car, he gets out, and Vulture, which is to say a fully equipped Adrian Toomes complete with his trademark cybernetic jetpack wingsuit apparatus thing comes screeching out of the dark to meet him. Uh, it's worth noting the suit is slightly different from the one we saw in Spider-Man Homecoming and seems to maybe incorporate elements of the one teased at the end of Amazing Spider-Man 2. Point is, new design for the Vulture suit. So the Vulture lands and casually suggests that his sudden appearance in this universe is because of Spider-Man. Morbius doesn't bat a mascara eyelash, which would suggest that Spider-Man already exists in this universe and that people are fully aware of him, or it's also possible that Morbius just doesn't want to ask stupid questions to a guy in a robot bird suit, because he clearly has his own thing going on. Idiot. In any case, the reason they're meeting is because Adrian wants to get a team together to quote, do some good. Good intentions aside, the team that most people associate Vulture with is the Sinister Six, who were first teased at the tail end of Amazing Spider-Man 2. But wait, despite looking terrifying, Morbius has never been depicted as a villain, he's actually a good-hearted anti-hero if anything, and he's definitely never been a member of the Sinister Six. So what's going on here? And if we have a team of villains, shouldn't there be a hero to oppose them? Like some sort of amazing, spectacular, friendly neighborhood hero who's been thoroughly established in multiple big screen iterations? Three U's. <laughs> well, hang on. That brings us to our next point. Yeah, the cube is a doorway to the other end of space, right? The doors open from both sides. Okay, first question answered. What universe is Vulture, who first appeared in Tom Holland's End of the Spider-Verse, currently in? IGN UK has confirmation from Morbius director Daniel Espinosa that this scene is indeed in the same universe as Venom. Morbius connects to the MCU via the portal that dumps tombs in the Venomverse. This is the same kind of portal that returned Doc Ock, Lizard, and Electro, and Goblin back to their universes at the end of Spider-Man No Way Home. A key detail here is that Toomes has at least retained his memories of who Spider-Man is, which is more than can be said for MJ or Ned. Now, despite the first Morbius trailers depicting Michael Keaton's MCU Vulture, a mural of Raimi-era Spider-Man and Amazing Spider-Man 2's Oscorp Tower, you see it back there? It's not in the movie. All of these things got scrubbed from the final version of the film, along with any hope among fans that Morbius was taking place in the main MCU timeline, or really any established Spider-Man timeline. But maybe there's more going on in the Venomverse than we know. IGN spoke to Morbius director Daniel Espinosa, and here is what he had to say. You know, if you look at most of, of how they kind of created the different timelines in, in, in Marvel, in the comic books, uh, you almost in all um, universes, you have versions of almost all characters in those universes, but they have slightly different um, approaches to who they are, if they're good guys or bad guys. But in some of those universes, a few of them, you don't have a Spider-Man, but that's very rare. The, the spider is a, 
almost like a totem uh, character within the Marvel Universe. One of the fundamental uh, capacities of a universe is to have a spider. So it seems likely that a Spider-Man already exists in this corner of the multiverse, and hey, that's pretty much how Tom Holland's version was introduced in the MCU, as a kid from Queens who was already slinging webs and making headlines. He was just kind of out there in the ether until he showed up in Civil War. Hey everyone. It's still a little bit odd that Morbius makes no indication one way or the other that he's familiar with Spider-Man, but either way, it's even more confusing why he'd want to join the Sinister Six unless he's taking Tomb seriously when he says he wants a team to do a little good or whatever. I don't care if you're a vampire on the run for crimes you didn't commit. If someone arranges a clandestine meeting in the middle of the desert, that's kind of shady. How did they connect? Anyway, was that like face Facebook? Craigslist? Bumble? Michael Morbius. Got tired of doing the whole good guy thing, huh? What's up, Doc? Okay, real quick, let's talk about the final act of Morbius and where we leave the good doctor at the end before all of that confusing Vulture stuff. In a climactic battle against his friend turned enemy Milo, played by Matt Smith, Morbius is forced to save his co-worker turned love interest Dr. Martine Bancroft, played by Adria Arjona. Fun fact, she voiced Martinez in Fortnite Save the World, you know, the version of Fortnite that came out before the Battle Royale. All right, guys, who's up for pizza? Anyway, Morbius saves Martine by turning her into a living vampire herself, which seems sort of messed up since he says himself that he's cursed by this affliction and that earlier he even made a syringe to kill himself for when his thirst for blood becomes too unquenchable. But I guess that's just something for them to hash out in Morbius 2. Even Morbius. Th that's not a real movie, I'm sorry. But to conclude this story, Morbius kills Milo with a combination of bats and science, which is great, but he's still presumed guilty for all the killings that Milo committed, so he hits the road. Or rather, he takes off into the night sky, and then later, before the post credit scenes, he hits the road and goes driving around somewhere that looks vaguely like California, which means it could be anywhere between Texas and Oregon. You don't look anything like you do on the news. Yeah, you look downright robust. Pilates helps. And of course, now it's time to run down the Easter eggs as fast as we can. Here we go. In the film's flashback sequence showing Morbius and Milo as kids, Dr. Nicholas mentions a school in New York for gifted youth. Could this be because Morbius's ability to fix complex medical equipment with office supplies is a latent mutant power and he's going to meet Professor Xavier? Well, no, I think it's just a regular school for genius kids. And really, if there's this much of a tug of war over Spidey, you can bet that Disney isn't just tossing the X-Men to Sony to play with, but those X-Men will show up one of these days. Welcome back. Don't make me angry. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. Morbius does a riff on the classic Incredible Hulk line when he's like, you wouldn't like me when I'm hungry. And yes, he's a vampire. He's very unpleasant. That's the whole, that's like the whole premise of the movie. And speaking of unpleasant, FBI agents Stratton and Rodriguez, played by Tyrese Gibson and Al Madrigal respectively, make mention of that situation in San Francisco, which is a pretty clear reference to both Venom fiascos in that city, again confirming what Daniel Espinosa told us about this movie taking place in the Venomverse. <laughs> And while we're on the topic of Spider-Man villains, Black Cat and Chameleon both get called out in the Daily Bugle, yet another thread connecting Morbius and Venom, as the Bugle appears there too. Sony's had a Black Cat movie in the works for a while now, and we just got word that the Chameleon would show up in the Craven the Hunter movie, played by Fred Hetchinger, who you might remember as that weird kid who got his iPad wet in the White Lotus. Oh, and friendly reminder that Craven the Hunter is being played by Aaron Taylor Johnson, the guy who played the MCU version of Quicksilver, because these cinematic universes just weren't messy enough. You're saying? Another newspaper headline references a rhino on the loose, but also mentions a zoo hoax, so they're probably talking about an actual rhinoceros, not Paul Giamatti in a robot suit. Rhino! That's one of those sentences that just saying it out loud makes me love my job and also realize how stupid it is. Anyway, FBI agents Simon Stroud and Al Rodriguez also got their start in the pages of Marvel Comics where they got mixed up with Morbius, in addition to Man-Wolf, Kraven the Hunter, and even Black Widow. But what did you think of Morbius? Did the Vulture reveal work for you? When will the Sinister Six finally assemble? And are you hoping they go the reality TV star route with Kraven the Hunter like they did in Ultimate Spider-Man? I feel like that would resonate in this post-Tiger King pop culture landscape. Everyone loved that show, Kraven the Hunter, basically Tiger King. Anyway, let's hear your best theories down in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching this episode of Cannon Fodder. For more Spidey, check out this refresher on No Way Home that you probably don't need. But remember to follow and subscribe to IGN wherever you like to watch because they keep making these superhero movies and we keep making these videos. See you next time. Who the hell are you, man? Dr. Michael Morbius at your service.